Welcome everyone to our panel of emerging women in the industry. Joining us via Skype from Alberta is Nicole St. Martin. Um, this is Clara Vesica. This is Connie Wong, Christina Esposito. And this is Nicole Chung. My name is Amanda Joy, and I am a screenwriter and actor based in Toronto. I never worked very much in like film offices or film administration, and I worked on set a lot. So I worked as a swing, and I worked as a grip and electric, and as a production assistant, and I did a lot of driving, and a lot of air and running. And I find at that level, the, the level of harassment is like unreal, especially compared to like other industries I've worked in. So, you know, the hierarchical structure, it's a power dynamic. I mean, I ran into two young women who were 18 years old. They were currently working as PAs and they confided in me and they were basically talking about how they wanted to leave the industry because they didn't realize how bad it was going to be. We had a question actually submitted by uh, a young woman who worked as a PA. At my last job, I was continually harassed by a male crew member. But when I complained to the AD, he treated me like I was the problem and I ended up having to quit. I feel like crews can become very cliquey and that this sort of environment allows for sexual harassment to flourish. Mm -hmm. So I guess the question here is how we can protect PAs and crew members from sexual harassment. If you're on a film set, the assistant directors are kind of like nobody's friend. Um, and like not in a bad way, but like assistant directors, like it's their job to keep things moving along, right? Mm -hmm. So if you go to them with like a personal problem, like all they care about is like getting their day in and like getting everything done for the day. Um, I've personally had like more luck if you go to like a production manager because mm -hmm. production managers, they tend to be friends with the crew, right? Like they're the ones who get all the gear. So like if you're getting harassed by like a technician or something, like they're the ones that give out all the toys to like everyone, right? right. And so they're chummy with everyone and everyone wants to be on their good side. So you have better luck going to a production manager to like deal with that problem because they have a better relationship with the rest of the crew. I know I'm saying the obvious, but it's again, it's just like the imbalance. Like if there's one, like, well, one PA and she's a woman and then all the crew is just like men. Mm -hmm. The likelihood of it happening is so like, so common. Um, for me, I actually work in the service industry, so it's not really that different, except there's just no art. And it literally, <laughs> it's like you're, you're gonna get, you just wanna get everything done for the day. Yeah. And it's just, and it's very male dominated where I work. And I thought about quitting a lot. It's always kind of like run through my mind, but it's just like I can't, I can't because I'm a woman. Mm -hmm. it's, it's like I can't stop fighting the good fight, you know? Yeah. So it, I literally decided to turn myself into a white man. I will, still to this day, I will think about like what? And Mindy Kaling, like, she's like one of my like idols. She's, she literally is just like, why are they so entitled? Why are white dudes so entitled? And why aren't you? Yeah, that's that's actually it though. Maybe so I have true. like changed my sort of look on myself um, and I'll try to be like a white dude <laughs> and then I will talk slower and then I'll drop my volume. I've kind of gained respect from them and I literally will just be like them and I'll be gross like them and they'll talk about gross things on purpose so that literally now we can talk about feminism. And when they come and say stuff to me, I go, no, because one, I know I'm a good worker, mm -hmm. right? But just because, like I started off as like a You're little one. Yes, yeah. I'm one of the boys, yeah. you know? And you need to kind of earn that. It's harder to put that skin on. Yes. Like I, you know, cause I'd be on set and like, you know, like a typical conversation is like the kind of blow jobs like girls from Montreal get oh. versus the kind from Toronto get. <laughs> yeah. right? And I'm like, oh I God. feel like I cannot contribute to that. <laughs> I understand, yeah. Yeah. But you can talk about your own experience. I don't know. You just kind of got to put like your own like ego and judgment away because you know that you're there. Yeah. Because yeah. you stand for more, right? Like, well, you're yeah, there, you know you're there for you. You stand for like, yeah. What you stand yeah. for. And telling them that it's not okay. Exactly. Yeah. Like straight yeah. up being like, I'm sorry, did you just say that to me? Like, you know what I mean? And that's that's easier said than done. Oh, for sure. Yeah. Definitely yeah. easier said than done. But like standing up for yourself yes. and knowing that you are actually, you deserve to be there and yeah. you should be there. Why do we feel that to be successful and to be included in a work environment, why is it that there's this kind of male neutrality that we feel that we have to aspire to? I'm older now and I just feel like I'm not gonna play that game. I'm not interested in trying to be a, a guy. Um, and I'm not, and I'm also not worried about being annoying because I really realized, you know, there was this constant pressure in this particular realm that I was in to 
you know, be that chick that guys love. Mm -hmm. You're the cool girl, right? You're the one who's gonna, <laughs> you know, you can you can talk as much filth as they can. <laughs> you know about sports, and even if you don't, you're gonna pretend to enjoy them. And you know, like it was just, and I just thought, you know, I I, I did that game for a while, not not being conscious of what I was doing. Really, I was sort of subconsciously doing it to fit in and to to do what I needed to do. Mm -hmm. um, but then eventually, I was just like, this is ridiculous. This is ridiculous. <laughs> I am wasting my energy, my intelligence, my you know life, my time on Earth trying to be something I'm not so that I can, what, have a job, be taken seriously. I mean, I think it helps if you have a spirit that's also a woman. Mm -hmm. yeah. That's not yeah, always yeah. the case, that's, that's not always possible. Woman. But if you do, going to that person, because mm -hmm. she will probably understand a bit more than some, like a guy so might. I was listening to the two people who were doing my hair and makeup talk about how, oh no, it's a female director. They said to me, I said, oh, is that a problem? And they said, oh, well, every time there's a woman on set who's directing, uh, the crew kept stop moaning and groaning and complaining. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And I was like, oh, wow. And sure enough, while I was on set, I had multiple people, crew, bad-mouthing this director that she was a woman. Oh, she's always late. You know, we're going to run overtime. The reason why she's running overtime is because every time she gives a direction, the cinematographer challenges her and they spend 10 minutes arguing about the fact that, <laughs> that he doesn't want to do what she's requested and every single one of them who was complaining brought up her her gender I f and they were talking to me <laughs> and i was like what is this this is surreal it was such a surreal moment and i was like she might not realize what's going on. I don't know if she did or not because they didn't do it in front of her face. But God, they were making it so hard for her on levels that should not have been an issue. There was this bizarre thing going on that was undermining one, her authority, and two, the work that she was able to do. Well, that example yeah. that we were talking about, about a PA being uh, harassed on set, so if you're a PA, you're pretty close to the bottom of, of the ladder. Mm -hmm. But if you're an if you're like up there on the call sheet as a guest star or a series like big like recurring or regular or whatever, you actually have a lot of a lot of power and you're really important because if you don't step on that set, they can't do that scene. Um, so I'm not saying like protest, <laughs> you know what I mean? yeah. but if you actually have power to call people out. I've been in these situations even when it has nothing to do with sex necessarily of someone just like being kind of like demanding or snarky to to a PA or someone low lower sort of on this sort of totem pole or whatever you have the power to say like that wasn't cool or to call them out um and as actors I mean so often as actors let's face it we don't have the power <laughs> but, but when you're on that set you are actually in, important and there's a reason why all of the cameras are on you and why they need they can't do anything until you step onto that set um and it's not about slowing down the process and i don't suggest that you slow down the process but you saying that wasn't cool or calling someone out on something if people will take a step back they'll say oh so sorry uh, because they don't want the lead actors in the show, the guest stars, like or whatever, to be like spreading this around and sort of getting offended. Because you know what? People know that actors know how to be loud. If you know how to do anything, it's how to be loud. <laughs> um, so I think that saying things and calling people on on things in like simple, not huge public displays, mm -hmm. um, but to be like, what you said to her wasn't cool, and I think she's kind of upset about it. We actually have the power to do that. We actually have the power to change. Sometimes when things are said, it's not people purposely trying to be like bad or mean or different things like that. Sometimes it's actually just like, that's the way they are. Yes, the joke is kind of sexist, but that's their sense of humor, etc. But we actually have power because we're artists to recognize how things that have said have and how that's made people feel and to talk about that um, in ways that aren't a blaming way, but that makes the, the world of the community that we work in better. We have to really respect everybody's experience um, because everybody's going to have different ones. And
and and just because it doesn't happen to you personally um it doesn't mean that it doesn't exist people saying why are we doing why are we doing this it should just be based on merit why are we like these types of comments i think make us weaker and they're they're actually like they're this sort of subtler form but that's equally damaging